With Rintorial finishing up and in-game tournaments and events becoming more and more polished and popular, I wanted to watch and learn how to play for gains with kill incentive in order to maximize your points. This means getting the victory royale and reaching the top elimination threshold or big bonus. The very first thing I noticed was some players have different ways to play for this, so let's watch. After TwitchCon, people talked a lot about how Tifu and Cloak always had a great setup in the early game, and some attributed that to getting Westworld uncontested. Whether they got their setup from there or not, you'll notice that people who slay out oftentimes have insane loot. One player who consistently gets this type of setup is Zexro. Zexor chooses Viking Village to drop most of his serious gains, which is a high loot, low materials, and high mobility drop spot. He cleans this out of players and is safe from third parties due to the altitude for some time. He loots it up as best as he can and gets a base of materials. He farms up all the good materials like the stone and the trees, but not the walls. Typically now he has at least a decent loadout and somewhere between 600 to 800 mats. From here he uses the rifts to seek fights, sometimes over towards Snobby if he knows there are multiple players there who will end up engaging where he can third party, sometimes towards soccer field, sometimes south towards greasy slash waterfall, sometimes he goes all the way to tilted if there are no fights to be had. So the key point is he knows the timings, rotate patterns for the majority of players in the area and he specifically seeks out these paths to further his loot and start off with a few kills going into the mid game and the end game. Here's that specific idea playing out in the first game of the EU Heat 1 qualifiers of Winter Royale. We just missed it, but in this case we can assume one kill from Viking Village and then he just took out a player here on top of the gas station. Taking a look at the loadout is very good. In this case we can take a guess that Zexro will have a better setup, which is loot plus materials, because Viking Village is better than Soccer Field and is much faster to loot. So taking this fight is a high probability of being at a setup advantage where the other player has less loot. That pays off for him and he ends up getting both Soccer Field players, which nets him max brick and metal. Already saving time for him and giving him an advantage while rotating. He does not need to farm so he can be quicker towards center circle. But we do pick back up with him in the same game following his early game path of destruction towards Tilted where he wants to further his advantage and possibly test the water for future games. Here he is engaging in Tilted at a time when most people in Tilted are bruised from fending off the rest of the Tilted droppers. The interesting thing to note is now he has that third elimination for the point, and he has the materials, a decent amount of heals, maybe he wants to upgrade his shotgun or get better heals in place of the med kits, or better utility in place of the stinks. Regardless, he decides this timing is too difficult and too susceptible to take an extended fight, so he ensures that the fight stays grounded and not a full-on build fight, dropping down, snaking through established builds, and forcing the players to search. Then going back up, not taking the risk of third parties getting angles by going too high, but eventually he gets the height and both players at that point feel the third party coming. The fight is too extended, so they disengage. The reward not being worth the risk as time goes on. Lastly, from the same game, we catch back up with Zexor who has netted himself another kill, and here we catch him fighting near the rotational POIs, which are risk, corrupted zones, quad crashers, where he knows players will be rotating into. This is the last stage where you'll find Zexor being hyper aggressive, as any time beyond this is when the server starts getting very congested in that mid second to third circle, which is right for third parties. You'll actually see him sometimes use his mobility items such as a rift to go to catch back up on positioning he loses by fighting so much early on. From here he typically turns into a surprisingly passive player when playing solo. To touch on that congestion, here's the radar during the start of the third circle in game one of the finals. As you can see there's no space to not get third party anymore at this point of the game. With that being said, Issa during this game racked up a few kills during that mid game by doing some very aggressive gatekeeping. Fortunately for him, he could take this positioning hit because he has the rift to go, and he kind of uses the fact that he will be getting third party to his advantage. You can clearly tell in this clip his opponent does not want to fight, and Issa keeps pushing him even with the distance of zone, which makes it easy for Issa to get shots without really getting returned fire from that player at all. So we've talked about how your early game will set you up for a strong end game. So let's look at a few end games where people take advantage of their strong setup and how they capitalize on that with the kill incentive. In this clip, Blue T still has remaining materials, a heavy sniper, and a decent weapon loadout. He has made it to end game and just needs to close out. In each of these clips, we will highlight the player's patience, awareness, and precision. First, Elim for Blue T comes off of waiting for an angle for W. Dean, who we see is looking for an angle on someone else, and is caught unaware by Blue T's heavy snipe. From here, Blue T makes the cheap rotate in the zone, knowing who is a threat, the player to his bottom left, and blocks him off the floors, while nobody else is a huge threat. Notice how each time he has an opportunity to box up, he purposely looks to see if he can get information on players around him. From here, he continues to try to avoid threats, which is anybody looking specifically at him, and worms his way through builds skillfully on the edge of zone, while taking any shots that he can while getting to his goal position zone. And again, when he boxes up, he takes stock of what is around him. Watch his patience as he holds the edit, assesses the situation, and waits for just after his opponent makes a move. In this case, first person to make a move loses, and Blue T gets a nice shot on both players. And then, the player who's in the box who's in a static position gets beamed as well. From here, it's a matter of keeping weapons reloaded, using third person vision, and pre-built structures to get the jump on people, and specifically making sure you are right hand peeking. 
This last 50-50 fight is a great example of awareness of your situation. He knows his SMG is no longer reloaded, he has no materials, so he uses his scar to finish him off and is constantly keeping his mechanics up by spamming crouch and jump to make him harder to hit. Krippa here has an amazing setup. Grappler, gold scar, minis, purple pump, green SMG, and high ground late with a decent map pool. But more importantly, while his setup gives him his position here, watch his awareness. This first player could have easily gotten the jump on Krippa if he wasn't paying attention, but instead his reflexes gives him the shot with a quick change of directions and an accurate shot. Then he continues with his height, leeching on top of players and not needing to layer very hard, not taking a single point of storm damage, but staying on the edge and looking for shots. This is a route that some players take. He finishes this clip up with really good tracking aim, first with the pump, then the follow-up SMG as the player flies at him with the grappler. Let's continue to follow to the end of this game with Krippa. This is a top three situation where Krippa has height and the circle is hugging a mountain. Watch how Krippa perfectly uses his last three builds to get to the mountain. He actually maybe could have saved these and used the grappler, but regardless, it's perfect material conservation for when he needs it. He gets over there, has good awareness of the grappler, but more importantly, perfect aim hitting this player for a close to max purple pump shot. This player was close to max HP. If Krippa doesn't hit this, he's done for with no materials left to play with. From here, he uses the mountain and knowledge of how the other player is playing with no mats to spend his minis. And and then waits for the next zone specifically to know how he can play it. If the zone goes up the mountain, he could win the game without doing anything. However, he is in big bonus territory, so he could get two points for one elim or just one guaranteed point with the victory royale for no risk. Unfortunately, this decision is easy since it's a qualifying game and he's already clearly qualified, but he still plays it perfectly to get that elimination. He takes shots while he can and backs off and uses the mountain to heal every time. Here's an endgame study of Skite, who clearly has a great setup with a grappler plus amazing loadout and materials. He finds himself in a great gatekeeping position on natural height in a box above the dusty divot where everybody's rotating out of to gatekeep and find good kills. His goal here is to gatekeep until he can move towards zone, knocking down every height attempt while at it, so he has the better opportunity to go for it later. You'll see the moment he seizes when the circle is covering both his position and a safe position in zone as he glides across and immediately goes for height fast with 90s. This very quickly puts him in a position to look for even more shots where he gets one E limb and a bunch of damage. Notice how Skite is getting himself deep in zone on height, above any pre-established builds so you can focus on taking as many shots as possible but continue to move. This makes it number one so he doesn't take any storm damage and number two so that he can get the best angles possible way in front of the pack where they're less focused on covering themselves as they focus on people above, below, and to the side of them, not in the front. He continues this once the next zone is revealed and immediately grapples deep into the zone and re-establishes height, putting himself in the best position during the top three. Here's the top three. He immediately takes stock of how much damage he does on the edit play and has the patience and knowledge of where the player got off to that he waits for the opportunity to get in the shot, which does come. I think more impressively though is how he chases, but once Doogie goes down to the divot, he realizes that Astro must be lurking nearby and turns around, not tunneling onto Doogie who he knows he has low. This is crucial. Not only does he get possible HP bonus from taking that other kill, but he maintains the stronger position for the fight with Doogie later on. It allows him to take his time and have the tempo when peaking, getting early chip damage until he has to dive for the 50-50. Interesting to note, especially for me as I've been struggling with AK swaps, is how he uses it. Pump, one or two AK taps, and back to pump, instead of full auto with the AK like you would use a SCAR or SMG. You'll actually see Zexrod doing the same thing. Here's an old clip from TwitchCon that was played on Glider Redeploy, but Ziff and Ronaldo's play here on low ground is a masterclass on late game kill incentive play. They control the entire low ground and focus down any player who comes down on their lair before it has a chance to turn into a cluster. This, plus the additional nice, constant repositioning by both players make it so that they never even begin to get shot at until the end. No builds mean they have to use whatever is down there constantly, and you see how Ziff finds the per beautiful angles for shots, and how accurate his shots are, constantly hitting nice headshots with a pump. Is he going to be able to get one? He's got to get one more. I think he just made the call to his teammate. They're coming out now. And there it is. Going to get it. That's another one for his teammate. Ronaldo gets it. That's a point right there from Big Bonus. They're just playing low ground warrior right now. Letting the players come down from finding all opportunity. That's another one on secret. The oh, men kills, And they got another one. It is heating up. Ronaldo's down, but it's okay. Stiff's still up. Alrighty guys, that's a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I've been really digging the fact that everyday players have recently had access to events with Kill Incentive, both through the in-game practice tournament system and the actual Winter Royale qualifiers. They have all been a blast, and this is shaping up to be the format for future competitive systems, so I'm really excited. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and do all the things on my social medias, and we'll be back with more content just like this.